on today's Techno Babble. Basic live streaming hardware. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to Techno Babble. Each week on this show, we talk about using video in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. There are a lot of myths and misinformation surrounding live streaming. Do you need a computer? Why doesn't my camera show up in my encoder software when I plug in from the HDMI of the camera into the computer's HDMI port? I can live stream to YouTube or Facebook Live for free, right? No one should pay for a live streaming host, and the list goes on and on. So, to go along with my new book, Live Streaming Church, I thought that we'd talk about some of the facts behind what you need to live stream. Let's start with the basic hardware that you need. Now, at the most basic, you need a video source, a sound source, and an encoder to send that audio and video to your live streaming host over the internet. Well, you're normally going to use a camera to capture video that goes to the live stream. It need not be a camera or even a camera alone. Depending on what you're streaming, it could be that you'd actually rather send video from a computer. For example, if you're doing training for your tech team, you might want to show them how to use some software but you don't want to do it at church because they'd have a better view on their computers at home, kind of like what I do with my ProPresenter courses. The video might also come from several cameras running through a video switcher with scripture or sermon points overlaid or keyed on top. Really, the source of the video doesn't matter as much as that you have a single video feed that goes into the encoder along with audio that's synced to it. And you want high-quality video, but still, it it need not be um, just a single source from a single camera. You have some options. Now, audio. For the audio, you've got three choices. I'm going to give them to you in order of preference. If you can do the first, don't worry about the second, and so on. Audio on the live stream, for music especially, is going to sound bad. Why? You're only hearing what is amplified for the room. Percussion and brass especially tend to be loud acoustically. Electric guitars, unless they're running through amps on stage, keyboards and vocals for most people in most rooms, tend to be quiet. As a result, you amplify the quiet stuff and ignore the loud stuff. So, online, you might only hear electric guitars, keyboards, and vocals, but no percussion or brass, if you have both of those. To fix this, it's best to have someone mix in a separate room that's acoustically separated. Now, I'll admit this is an expensive choice. You're going to need both more equipment and more people. You could also mix to a sub out using a good set of noise isolating headphones. Notice I didn't say noise canceling because they add sound to make it so that you don't hear outside sound. This could be taxing on an already overworked sound engineer though. Additionally, he could be mixing for the live stream and not deal with something in the room when he needs to. Finally, the bare minimum you should do is add in an ambient microphone to the main mix for the live stream. Done well, this will sound a lot closer to what people hear in person. You don't have as much control, though, but it can work. Finally, encoding. Now, 
Send that signal to your encoder. Most churches think of an encoder as software that goes on a computer. It need not be, though. Encoding appliances ranging from $500 to multiple thousands of dollars can do this as well. Normally, I recommend these hardware solutions for a few good reasons. First, they can be cheaper than a dedicated computer because you need not only the computer, but also a capture card and software. Secondly, they're purpose-built and can't be used for email or downloading software from dubious sources. Finally, they're not going to get a system update or OS update that can cause problems with the encoding software. And that's not to say it's always a bad idea. Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder, OBS, short for Open Broadcaster Software, Wirecast, and others do a fine job. The first two are free and limited in features. The third, Wirecast, isn't and it combines the features of a switcher with an encoder. But to do it well, it really requires a pretty beefy computer. So I guess the choice is yours. If you want to live stream, you need a video source, an audio source, and an encoder. Next time, we'll talk about some of the other things you need to live stream. Here's a preview. It's not just a good internet connection. This video is part of a new course that's launching in conjunction with my new book, Live Streaming Church. For more information, go to tdm.fyi slash livestreamingchurch or join my online community to get a copy for free at launch. For more information on that, go to tdm.fyi slash churchtechu. That's short for university. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity. Hey, while I've still got you, go ahead and click subscribe and click the little bell icon to get notifications of each new video so that you can know when they're posted and join the contest that I'm about to start.